All right. I'm going to take a little bit of time here to answer some letters. This is a. Uh, here's just showed us here. This is. All right. Oh, hold on here. Got here to some... Oop, Got to mute that. Here's the stack of letters here in the mail and things. Um, I had the answer, so I'm going to do that real quickly. Just on live stream would be a good way to do this. Those of you who can tune in, fine. If not, you have to. You can watch it later. Um, first letter here. It says hello, uh, or excuse me, dear Brian Ellinger. Hello, brother Brian. I wanted to thank you again for the videos you put out explaining and more importantly showing scriptures in the beloved King James Bible. I haven't memorized them yet, but I do have them written down in the scripture guides. I sent you another one with more scriptures on the Godhead or you know, of the Godhead. Interesting. I have been to churches, Sunday schools, and Bible studies in and out, off and on, in other words. And I have never heard of the Godhead, much less been taught on it. Yeah, most of them don't. Um, as I am sure you will agree, or maybe not, there is a satanic trinity with the devil, false prophet, and antichrist. Yeah, there is. These are three separate beings. If I am wrong, please feel free to correct me on this. No, you're not wrong. Um, definitely there is a satanic trinity in the future in the book of Revelation. Uh, Revelation 13 talks about it. Um, unfortunately, the Catholics are really smart in knowing how to confuse and ultimately deceive people. Um, the main things I learned from your channel are difference between Catholics, Jews, Christians, uh, Godhead versus Trinity, Bible version issue. Um, heresies like replacement theology, Calvinism, Catholic trends or traditions. Excuse me. Thank you for your teachings. I hope you don't mind my letters. I never do. The only thing I, I mind about letters is that I oftentimes don't have much, you know, time to uh, answer them. So, and hi to everybody that's tuning in here. I'm just taking some time to answer some letters for those of you who are just tuning in here. Um, well, at any rate, thank you for your service to the Lord, which has benefited me among many others. I hope I can do any part in, in serving the Lord as well. Thank God we live in a country that we can still read a good Bible. Very true. My scripture guide is uh, far from over. I plan to make changes and improvements to it to help boost uh, or to help lost and new Christians to study the Bible. My point is, please feel free to add to paper copy and send back for any ideas you may have to help improve. Thank you. And actually, his name is his initials are BD as well. So, <clears throat> um, yeah, so there's one letter. And here's the scripture guides that he was talking about. Um, pretty neat. I'll just kind of hold it up there, you know, just showing. A lot of different things very very creative I, I like things like this um, so and here's some printed out ones he sent me as well so really neat stuff really appreciate that um, here we have a letter I'll cover up the name I don't want to show the thing but Pretty neat little letter here that we got on the back. Lots of uh, lots of stickers. Oliver liked looking at that one, and um, says, "Thank you so much, and God bless you and your family in Christ Jesus." So neat little handmade card, and um, I don't want to show the names or anything like that, so I won't show the inside, but. Um, yeah, really neat. Thank you for that. Uh, another letter here we have. Um, uh, the initials here are SP, first and last name. He says, hello, Mr. and Mrs. Denlinger. My name is SP. I'll show the full name. I'm 59 years old and live by myself in the little town of, I'll tell, say that, located in, um, I won't say that either. I try to keep things private here for people. The most important thing about me is that I am a born-again Christian since 
March of 15th, 1999. I discovered your ministry, oddly enough, while doing a Google search of the word Catholic. <laughs> I like to keep my uh, self knowledgeable about their beliefs as the spirit leads because I have a hard time relating to their worship practices and otherwise. Um, I write to you for th two reasons. First and most important, keep up the good fight. I've viewed several of your videos in the last couple of weeks and I've been blessed by the messages and hard work that you that was put into them. Don't get discouraged. You are slash have been bold and willing to put out the word and stand on the truth. I'm so sorry that you've had to endure the persecution I've also witnessed on the World Wide Web. Yeah, it kind of comes with the territory, I guess. <clears throat> um, it's spooky. As to the extent that the demon spirits have gone to in attack to in attacking your ministry, um, but rest assured that you will be victorious as you continue to be strengthened by God in dealing with them. I appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, number two, second, um, and out of curiosity and inspiration, the sign that appeared to be a four foot by eight foot with the verse of Mark 217 King James Version published on YouTube on, uh, what is that, uh, April 11th, 2016, entitled, What is True Biblical Salvation, spoke very powerful to me. You stated that you and your wife had talked about it uh, and prayed about it and then prepared it. I identify with the process you used to perform this work because it was the same one that my wife passed on June the 27th, 2016, and I used to solve issues um, in our daily lives. Um, Fine enclosed a page of questions I would like to have answered if you are agreeable. I don't want to take up a lot of your time because I can see that you are very busy. I've also enclosed a self-addressed stamped envelope if you are willing to reply. I just have to know the rest of the story to satisfy my um, own curiosity. Um, only intentions are to print one of these myself, or paint, excuse me, paint one of these myself and place it in the path of passers-by. Um, I can write back, you know, certainly, but uh, uh, this is a little bit quicker just to get this out. So I hope you don't mind. Um, may God richly bless you as you labor in this life. I love you and look forward to spending eternity with you. Um, I, eternity is just such a wonderful thing when you think about it, just to be able to get out of this life and just go up there and just say, okay, no more false converts, no more people infiltrating, no more people <laughs> The areas that I'm messed up in, Lord's going to straighten me out in, you know, not other people and I can't trust them. And they just let's just go to be home now, Lord. Um, feel free to contact me if ever I can help out in your walk. And if I can direct you to any resources uh, or whatever, give me a holler here in State Race Rome. We'll be in prayer for your ministry uh, here or there. Sooner or later, I'll see you. Your brother in Christ Jesus. SP is the initials. Okay, questions here. What type of board did you use for this sign? Okay, um, what we used, I didn't want to just have regular standard plywood because you get all the little, like the little football cutout things, you know, where they cover up for a knot or whatever else, and, and you get, it's kind of rough surface, and I thought that's not going to be real easy to paint on. So I basically went to a, like Lowe's, and I got a four by eight sheet of plywood that's sort of a, um, I forget what they call it, furniture grade or something like that. And it was just like a veneered plywood. Um, I think it was poplar. They had birch and they had oak and whatever else. Um, so that's what I got. Um, in hindsight, it would probably have been better to maybe get something that was, you know, maybe treated or something. I'm not sure because the bottom edge started to actually rot out on the side and I had to retire it. It's now in the hallway downstairs on the wall. Um, what type of brand of paint did you use for the background? Um, gloss paint, uh, both white and black. Exterior gloss paint. Um, the higher the gloss that you get, the more it's going to shed rainwater. If you get a flat white or black, it's it's not really going to um, you know shed the rainwater all that well. Won't last all that long. Um, 
you know, show you background and lettering, uh, white and then black. What kind of brushes did you use to do the lettering? Um, just fairly cheap. Just go to a you know craft store or whatever else, and you get art brushes. You know, you'd be surprised how to get really good um, lines and things. You have to use pretty fine brushes. Um, I noticed that some of the lowercase letters were bigger, smaller than others, but were consistent in size throughout. Did you use a stencil for the letters? And if so, did you? How did you transfer them onto the board before lettering them? Um, well, what we did is I printed out, um, I used a, a certain font, I forget what it was, but basically I printed them out and then I, I cut the letters out and it wasn't really a stencil per se, because a stencil is more a cutout with a, the letters cut out of it, you know, and then you just go inside. It was actually the letter and I traced around the letter. And, um, and it was kind of tough because I, I tried to measure things out and whatever else. Um, and then I would get the letters and I'd try to line them up as best as I could. So wasn't really a professional sign. I did my best on it. And uh, my wife and I painted it then. Um, my grandfather, uh, Milton Denlinger, was actually a phenomenal uh, sign painter. He was an artist and, um, and would have been, uh, you know, a big help to me. But he passed away back in 1991. So... Um, saved man, loved the Lord, and uh, was a chalk talk artist, much like Peter Ruckman. So, looking forward to seeing my grandfather again. But, uh, um, lastly, what made you choose the Mark two seventeen verse or the verses of Matt, Matthew nine twelve and Luke five thirty one thirty two? Well, Mark two seventeen just always kind of spoke to me, and 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 I think it's it really gives a good thing for just people driving by, passing by, you know that. That if you're sick, if you're sick of sin, if you struggle with things, um, Jesus Christ came to save you. And uh, so that's how I'd answer that. Here we have another letter. For those just joining us, uh, we're answering letters today um, that came into the ministry here. Dear Brian, I enjoy watching your videos and have subscribed to you on YouTube. I want to ask multiple questions if you don't mind. Um, and by the way, this is a good way to get you say, well, Brian never re replies to my comments or whatever else. There are a lot of comments on YouTube. OK, <laughs> and I'm not here all the time either. So um, if you want, I mean, even if you're my enemy or whatever else and you want to uh, ask me questions, write them out, print them out, send them to me in the mail and I will do a video on them. OK. Question number one, can a saved person think that it is biblical to become spiritually one with Jesus since they have this Holy Spirit within, or is that getting towards a Hindu belief? No, it's not Hindu at all um, to be one with Jesus. Ephesians chapter five, I'm just looking up here. I'm not going to do screen sharing or anything. Um, seeing where the verse is. Um, Ephesians 5 verse 31 for this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and shall be joined unto his wife and they too shall be one flesh one flesh this is a great mystery but I speak concerning Christ and the church so we are members of his body and there's a whole lot of um, you know verse 30 for we are members of his body of his flesh and of his bones um, so it's talking about Jesus Christ and, and you know Christians being one flesh being you know, spiritually connected to him. So no, it's not, you know, un, unscriptural or whatever else. Um, number two, as a Christian who hates her job, what should she do? Well, I understand Christians get themselves into bad um, situations and things. I don't believe women should be working outside of the home. We'll get into that actually coming up here soon. But um, I understand that there's women that get themselves into a bad situation and they're working outside the home they don't like it and whatever else um you get a single woman that's that's you know doesn't have a father anymore to take care of her and doesn't have a husband and whatever i mean there's all kinds of bad situations out there i get it okay um but you should try always to look at the scriptures and say okay the bible says you know to be a keeper at home as a woman and proverbs 31 that woman is not going out and having a nine to five job she's actually working and making things 
that she can sell in the marketplace. And um, I think that's a lot better uh, to, to do as a woman. Um, you know, as far as hating your job, um, I would definitely, you know, pray about that and say, okay, Lord, I don't want to, I don't want to do this. Um, if you're married, talk to your husband about it and say, I don't think it's right to, to be working outside the home. You know, um, there's a lot you can do to cut down on expenses so that you can survive on one income. Um, a lot of different things there. So, um, Question number three, do you see anything wrong with working from home or making money online? No, I don't. A uh, Christian lady can make money from home, certainly. Uh, the danger of going out into the workforce out there and actually leaving your home and going out there is, of course, um, you're going to have situations where your husband can't protect you. Um, you're going to have single men coming after you and things like that. I mean, there's all that stuff is out there. Um, question number four, how do you feel about entrepre entrepreneurship? <laughs> I can say it. <laughs> um, don't really have any thoughts on that because uh, I know what the word is and whatever else, but I don't really, I haven't really ever studied that. So just be honest there. Uh, question number five, how do you feel about grad school? Uh, I, I, I'm not really a big fan of, of uh, college education and things like that. Most of it's a scam, to be quite frankly. Um, I think you're wasting your money quite, you know, just, just being honest. Um, number six, question number six, what do you think about traveling? Uh, well, um, I can't answer that for you. Uh, for me, I'm not really a big fan of traveling. I'm, I'm, uh, you know, I, I don't go near, air, near airports anymore. Now they have all this invasive stuff and the body scanner thing that you go through. That stuff is super toxic. You know, I just, no, thank you. Um, traveling, driving places and things like that. Eh, it's OK, but I'm I'm more of the uh, just, you know, stay at home. You know, vacation time for me is just local little day trips. And uh, that's what we like. We're not really big into driving all over the place. Um, question number seven. Do you think Christians should carry guns? Well, that depends on your situation. Uh, certainly for self-defense, if you are in a very dangerous area, uh, yeah, you know, I think so. Um, you know, we, we have, uh, we live in an area where we're not on the top of the food chain, you know, here in Northern Maine. And, uh, we have a, a big bull moose that literally comes up and walks. Uh, the other morning I thought I, I was laying there and I heard, you know, boom, boom, like, like that. And I, I, I thought, what in the world? And I, and I got, and I opened up my eyes and I, I looked over towards Oliver's bed, just a one room cabin. And I looked over towards his bed and, I, and I'm thinking he had kind of was down a little bit and sideways, <laughs> twisting all over the place in his sleep. And I couldn't see him. And I thought, oh, he got out of bed. And, and I was looking around, you know, and I couldn't see him. And I was all just, it was four o'clock in the morning. And I heard the boom, 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 you know, and I realized that's not Oliver. That's, that's this moose. He just walked over our front steps, big bull moose, you know? And, and so, uh, most, most, you know, uh, wild animals will leave you alone, but sometimes you get them at they get a little bit weird, whatever else. So sometimes I carry a gun when I'm on our property. Um, if I'm out in the normal areas where, uh, vehicles are or other buildings I can get into quickly. Well, then I don't carry a gun. But um, if I go towards a city or whatever else, well, yeah, I'd carry a gun. Um, certainly, self-defense is fine. Uh, if you, a lot of people are in countries where you can't carry guns. So you just have to work that stuff out. <clears throat> um, question number eight. This question is for Catherine, do you know if you will ever if you'll ever do any more of the Sister Catherine show? I really liked it. We've talked about it, um, doing more of those. Uh, not sure yet. I uh, can't do it right now, just for sake of time. Um, number nine, question number nine. Do you mind telling how you and Catherine first met? Um, okay, I think I have talked about that in other videos, but I'll just answer it here. Um, we met through. She actually contacted. Um, my ministry years and years ago 
had a, had a bunch of questions and things. And, you know, we just started talking back and forth and writing back and forth. Actually, she wrote to me, you know, offline and I wrote back to her offline and we talked on Skype a couple times. And then, um, basically I proposed to her over Skype and, uh, cause I saw she had a really, um, fervent desire for truth. And so I went out to Iowa, picked her up, brought her back to Pennsylvania. We got married here. Her parents flew in and um, had a small little ceremony with our house church at the time. And then uh, that was it. I was married life after that. So hopefully that answers your question, um, your questions, say it that way. Um, next, we have a letter here, initials of a woman that sent it is HH. Not going to share the name. Um, and I'm going to, I'm going to read this. I'm going to have to leave out some details again, just for privacy sake here, but, um, says Brian, I have watched many of your videos online and enjoy them all. I appreciate your research on the topics that most pastors or quote unquote church officials tend to skip. I have a pressing question and I would be most grateful if one, if would, if you would consider giving me feedback, I've suffered from obsessive compulsive disorder. I'm sure you're aware of what it is. Yeah. Since 1997, my condition became more debilitating when I was exposed to charismatic Christianity and spiritual warfare through a book written by a former Miss America from uh, Minnesota, I think, who claimed her leg grew four inches after visiting a faith healer. I was raised Baptist and didn't really or didn't realize most charismatics aren't firing all, all cylinders. Well put. <laughs> she claimed she could see into the spirit realm, black clouds over people in sin, and angels standing in churches. Charismatics claim all kinds of stuff. Got miraculous healings from other ailments, and that her young daughter passed away only after Jesus told her he had to wait until she fell asleep to talk to her, to take her, because her prayers sent him away three times. <laughs> <laughs> it's just the charismatics come up with some of the weirdest stuff, you know. That this charismatic woman's praying and Jesus had to run away, you know. This all put doubt in my mind and made me question the validity validity of my own faith and whether I viewed God properly. Oh, uh, why could she see see the spirit realm? And that's exactly it. Um, the whole Pentecostal charismatic thing is all about, you know, look at me, I'm better than you, I'm I've received the initial evidence of the baptism of the Holy Ghost and speaking in unknown tongues. What about you? You know, I can speak in all kinds of different uh, tongues and things. You can't. Oh, you know, I can heal people. I can this, I can that. Yeah, it's pride. Um, what if a spirit harmed me? I basically began to think I had the wrong God and maybe I wasn't worshiping right or was saved at all. I was in quote unquote a student who soon began having panic attacks, chronic anxiety, and was permanently gripped by fear that this was an attack from the enemy. Problem is what I feared actually happened. I don't really live life. I exist in fear every day because I know that when I do not succumb to the OCD, I end up unable to eat, sleep, enjoy anything, or even relax. I cannot even pray when I am at my worst. Question, I am considering a deliverance minister. Don't even think about it. Okay, I can answer that right now. Um, do you think all deliverance is unbiblical? Yes, absolutely. Another facet of charismatic chaos. Absolutely. Deliverance in the charismatic system from everything I've studied about it. I've studied it for years. Deliverance is actually impartation. They're actually imparting devils. Um, and my great grandfather on my mother's side was one of the very first Pentecostal preachers in Pennsylvania. He was way back. And the guy was evil. He beat up my grandmother a lot, you know, his, his daughter. Um, I mean, he was a very, very wicked man. And um, I remember my mother telling stories of she'd go to see her grandfather, you know, and uh, he'd be there saying, um, if you touch that, I'm going to break your fingers. Is what he'd say to her, you know, just evil man. And uh, my grandmother. Um, she just was a, a basket case. She passed away here just a few years ago. Last one of my grandparents to pass away, but she was she was a nutcase, that woman, just all over the place. And 
you know, oh, God does this for me and Jesus healed me of this and that and whatever else. And then something bad happened and just, you know, there is no God. I, 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 why would God do this to me? I can't stand it. And just, and just go crazy. I mean, charismatics and Pentecostals stay far away from them. Okay. Um, continuing here, it says, in some passages, it seems so. In others, it seems the cessation doctrine does not apply. I have reached out to pastors, peers, doctors, counselors, church, and prayed until I don't know what to do. I watch your videos on deliverance, and some types have a Catholic origin. The minister coming to my state is a former occultist. Please do not stop reading. Who now educates others on what he used to do to sabotage Christians and warns, warns them of the enemy's tactics. There's plenty of testimonies, and I have watched most of his videos. If Satan can't cast out Satan. How is deliverance explained? The man does lay hands on people and they fall out. I've never seen that in scripture. Okay. Um, I remember there was a guy, Stephen Dollins. I don't know if that's the same guy you're talking about here, but he was a former Satanist, whatever else. Then he was a professional wrestler. Now he's a deliverance minister. And the guy's got long hair and he's got, you know, all kinds of other issues and things. And I'm thinking, you know, um, a lot of these charismatic people, you know, they'll, they'll God's given me these signs and God's given me a word of prophecy. God's good. You say, uh, could you show me a scripture or something? Oh, sure. Certainly turning your NIV Bible to whatever. And you think, huh? Wait a second. You're, you're the spiritual powerhouse that can see angels walking through the room and you talk to angels and Jesus has taken you to heaven on many occasions and shown you visions that other people haven't seen and whatever else, but you use an NIV, you know, and you think, yeah, okay, <laughs> that doesn't work. Um, uh, I don't want my life to become even more messed up if I go, and it will be if you go to one of these charismatic things. Um, my late mother never saw me well from this, and the rest of my family doesn't even communicate, so I'm on my own. Thank you for reading. I just cannot determine from reading the word whether all the gifts have in fact ceased. Thanks so much for your time, and thanks, thank you for your ministry. Um, the whole secession, secession you know the, the sign gifts ceasing deal um my stand on that is basically i believe that the miraculous signs to the jews when the nation of israel finally just said no we're not really you know interested they had that little chance there throughout the book of acts and you know uh when when paul is you know later on in the book of acts he's shaking his garment saying your blood be upon you you know <laughs> i mean to just forget it um you know, the Jews can still get saved, certainly, but God's given them the spirit of blindness now. Um, Romans chapter 11 talks about that. And, uh, you know, they're brought back in unbelief, the whole thing. So um, the sign gifts have ceased. Um, but 1 Corinthians chapter 12 through 14 talks about gifts of God that are given there. And I think something like speaking in tongues. Tongues there. Um, would be languages and there are some Christians that have a, a gift for learning languages and they're very very good at um, getting the language just right where they don't really have much of an accent they actually sound like they're born and raised understanding that language that foreign language they, they're really good at it others have a gift for um, interpreting another language a foreign language uh, healing that, you know, it's funny because First Corinthians 12 talks about the gifts, gifts, plural of healing. Um, well, if you have a miraculous gift of just laying hands on people and they get healed, you don't need gifts, plural of healing. And I talked about that again. There's Christians that are very good at, at uh, natural remedies. Christians that are good at nutritional therapy, at exercise, advice on exercise for people on all kinds of things like that. Um, so I do believe that the gifts are there, the gifts of healing are there, and the gift of tongues is there, but it's not the miraculous kind of a thing like you're seeing in the book of Acts. The gift of tongues is people that can learn languages and apply them, that can, can translate the Bible or write tracts in other languages. That's a gift of tongues, okay? Um, gifts of healing, again, helping people that are in poor health through nutritional therapy, through herbal remedies, natural healing, stuff like that. Um, those gifts are still there. Uh, prophesying. There are some people that are really good at, at, at prophecy, Bible prophecy, not, you know, next week you're going to see a red car with a, uh, and you're going to, you know, whatever, you know, 
no, 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 no. I'm talking showing people Bible prophecy. So there are spiritual gifts there, but they're not what these charismatics are bringing them out as. Right? That's very important to get. And going there, you're going to get really messed up by these charismatics. Um, you know, there's some some weird stuff that they do. As far as um, ways to overcome obsessive compulsive disorder, it's going to be very similar to the thing of depression. Um, some of it can be nutritional. I mean, you would be surprised what poor nutrition can do. Uh, you know, check into some of that stuff. You know, I mean, you might even just do a, a search for uh, natural health cures for obsessive compulsive disorder. And see, you know, um, there are things that you can eat that will help out your mental um, clarity and things. You know, you'll have brain fog, they talk about, where you're not able to think clearly. And um, you, you take some, you know, you start to work on your nutrition. That will help. Um, but also, if you're messing around with this charismatic stuff, I'd get as far away from that. Any kind of charismatic books in your home, get rid of them, burn them. You know, uh, that's also important to do. Uh, pray about it. I mean, there, you know, a, a lot of times the Lord, if you start to go the wrong way and the Lord's leading you and you start to go the wrong way, you'll get away from the Lord and you'll, he's still there. You're still saved, but you're not going to feel real comfortable until you get away from what you're doing and get back in fellowship with the Lord. Um, I've seen that he won't let you continue in those sins. So good afternoon, everybody. Um, just to update those of you who are just joining, um, as you can tell from the letter or from the, from the letter, as you can tell from the title, we're answering letters. So, um, okay. Next letter, June 27th, 2019 to this here. Uh, dear Mr. Denlinger, I just finished studying your YouTube video entitled Vatican secret societies. Hold on. I'm going to sneeze. <coughs> Excuse me. Vatican Secret Societies, Jesuits, and the New World Order. That's on my secondary channel. It answers a lot of questions for me, and I plan to make others aware of it and encourage them to view it. I plan to do that by showing them tran transcribed excerpts from the video, crediting the various authors and historians cited. I have identified them all except the narrator himself, and seeing that his words represent the majority of those spoken, I believe it is important to identify him and his credentials. Could you forward to me his name and his credentials? Is he an historian, author, and what are his previous works? This is important information. If I am to convince people that your video should be taken seriously, thank you. Okay. Um, and it's the letters, initial there, JB. Um, I do not know who put that video together. It is not my video. Okay. Uh, somebody actually had sent me a link to that video, and they said, this is really good. You ought to check it out. I checked it out, and I mirrored it on my channel. Um, I'm sorry. I don't, I don't have the name of that the person that did that. You'd have to do that research yourself. I just, like I said, it was sent to me. I read it and I or he read it. I, I watched it and said, good. I'm going to put this on my channel. <clears throat> okay. Uh, next letter here we have. <clears throat> um, I'm just going to refer to this one. Uh, maybe I'll read it. I'm not sure. Yeah, I, I guess I'll, I'll read this. <clears throat> um, dear Ryan, um, keep preaching the Lord's word. Says something about at the top there. I'm going to skip that. Keep preaching the Lord's word. I listen to your teachings sometimes two or three times. I appreciate the time and research you and our Catherine have put into each one. I have learned so much from the both of you. The fakers had me so messed up, confused, and scared. I'm so thankful the Lord led me to your channel. The latest video is quite a surprise slash not a surprise. I'm sure this was heartbreaking for all. The first time I heard Jeremy, he was on with Tim. Jeremy's uh, wife sneezed several times. He asked her hatefully if she was done. I thought, I thought, oh my gosh, man, it's, it was just a sneeze. It's not like it's something she has control over, among other dreadful incidents from him towards her. I remember thinking, I'm so thankful that I was never married to a man 
that treated me like that. Also, as I would listen to Tim's channel when Jeremy was on there, he was always, he always, always um, sounded so sad and depressed. What about the comfort of the Holy Spirit? I know he certainly comforted me during the sickness and passing of my husband. Depression may happen from time to time, but he also gives us joy. However, Jeremy's depression was prevalent. Every time I would listen, he seemed depressed. He also gave listeners, at least me, the impression Tim's new wife was awful and Tim had made a mistake he would eventually regret. I thought maybe she wasn't saved and thought surely Tim knows better. As I got to know her through Tim's channel, she seemed like a sweetheart and a great help me to Tim. I couldn't see the purpose of his, Jeremy's in other words, wisecracks. He seemed quite knowledgeable about the word of God, but always presented it proudly, not humbly. And if you don't agree with him, well, you are just pond scum. Many times Tim would gracious, graciously and humbly put up with his garbage, even though some of the insults that were implied seemed to be directed toward Tim. As time went on, I believe the truth showed itself. If you give people enough rope, eventually they will hang themselves. Yeah, very true about Jeremy. Um, <clears throat> I understood later on um, that uh, a lot of the stuff that, that Jeremy was supposedly being shown from the scriptures um, that he would share with me and some other people, he was actually taking it from others. So, um, yeah, uh, Jeremy Carter has major issues. Um, okay, then she says here, two testimonies I'd like to share. One is about health insurance. A couple of years ago, I acquired, uh, I think she means inquired about some health insurance through a private broker. Um, blindness, stupidity on my part. After listening to many of your teachings, I was determined not to go to a so-called healthcare facility, hospital, hospital, or take their poison. I never gave up on my health insurance, what a waste, even though I didn't use it. The premium seemed reasonable, but I was allotted a certain amount for my income. On my taxes, taking money from a small investment, adding it to it to buy a car with no payments, I went over that allotted amount. Um, so, so they charged the full premium, which summed up to owing the government over $10,000. Needless to say, I finally canceled my health insurance. Although this was a very expensive lesson, I am grateful the Lord led me away from this lie. Yeah, um, you know, the health insurance thing, I haven't had health insurance and in, I don't even remember how long. <laughs> and, you know, you just, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to break fellowship with somebody if they do have it, but, you know, I just don't think it's necessary. And you, you know, you get your get your own health in in check. You know, take care of your own health is is what I believe. But uh, <clears throat> the other testimony is God's protection over me, being a widow and and by myself, physically ninety nine point five percent of the time, I really rely on the Lord, and for the most part, I am never afraid. One Saturday evening, having not slept well the night before, I put on my PJs early, pajamas early. Neighbor across the street was tink tinkering in his garage, and at one point he was looking intently over my way. The neighbor beside me had her dogs in her fenced backyard. They were viciously barking and kept on barking, which is unusual for them. Being in my PJs and having every window covered by curtains, I looked out several times and saw nothing. With the dogs' continual barking, I started to get dressed and go outside to see. About halfway of getting dressed in my street clothes, the dogs stopped barking. I thought to myself, good. I'd rather stay in my PJs. It was a very nice day, so I had the front door open. The next thing I know, the police are pulling up in front of my house. When they got out, they asked me if I lived there uh, or lived here. Puzzled, I replied yes, to which they informed me there was a man in my backyard in daylight. Come to find out, he was trying to steal some of my things, and he was carrying a knife. Not knowing these things or even knowing he was back there, I would have ended up going outside seeing him and I would have confronted him. Who knows what he might have done. Pretty sure he was doped up and had a lot of alcohol in him. Again, so grateful the Lord protected me in so many ways. Thank you again for everything. TC is the initials there. And uh, thank you for sharing that story. It's, it's, it's amazing what the Lord will protect you from. It really is. I mean, there's, there are some really bad people out there. And that some of these drugs and things, that, are, that are, these prescription drugs, it just, I mean, I literally saw a guy um, years ago that uh, he made a video. He had a gun channel on YouTube here, and he made a video complaining about something, and he said he was on pain medication, 
And uh, he said the next day he wakes up and, and his pills had worn off overnight. And he said he, he checks email and he said there's all these comments on this video. And he thinks, what video is this? And he went, he looked at the video and he said he literally watched it and said, I don't even remember making this video. You know, he was on drugs. I mean, and, and this was a clean cut, you know, professing Christian type of a guy, you know, and these drugs make people do some really weird things. So we need to really rely on the Lord to protect us in the days ahead because it's just, it's going to get worse. Um, next we have, uh, uh, let's see here. This is a, this is a letter. Um, uh, I'm not going to read all this, but it's um, just just asking if, they, if I've been getting the donations and the answer is yes. Uh, VL would be the initials there. They're from uh, California. Uh, yeah, I have been getting the donations and a offer to buy insulation for our upcoming um, project that we're doing. And um, I do appreciate that. Um, it's not going to be a whole lot. Most of the work is actually done already. So, um, but just, just wanted to make a point about that and say that, yes, we have been getting the donations. So thank you very much for that. Um, and the insulation that we need, it's a, it's a very small cabin, so it's not going to be that much. Um, Uh, let's see here. This one I think we just got today. Um, this is July the 3rd, 2019, when this was written. Dear Brother Brian and Sister Catherine and Oliver, greetings in the name of our dear Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Your ministry has been a great blessing, so I wanted to send a little support and say thank you. May the Lord increase the enclosed to you 100-fold. If you feel led, I would appreciate prayer. A 53-year-old single woman, I have been a victim of mind control since childhood. Because of my upbringing, my adult life has been riddled with repeated patterns of abusive relationships in churches, employment, academia, family, etc. Having become so accustomed to abuse, neglect, as normal, I didn't even know something was wrong until just two years ago when the Lord started exposing me to ministries like yours. I, I don't think any of us really realize. Let me just stop here for a minute. I don't think any of us really realize the extent to which mind control is used just on a normal basis, a normal basis. I mean, it is everywhere. It, it's, it's insane. Um, the kind of stuff that people are exposed to and, you know, uh, very, very few are even willing to talk about it. You know, very few preachers won't even talk about the mind control. It's really disgusting because they're mind controlling your people. They really are. Currently, I live in a small town in, I'm not going to say where, I first came here six and a half years ago when my mother became gravely ill and needed help. In 2016, she died. Although I'd wanted to leave this area, my 81-year-old dad decided to move into my mom's far, former house. They were divorced, uh, a 21-acre farm. Most of the work at his, this farm falls on me, and I am exhausted, isolated, and alone. I praise the Lord for sustaining me through all of the all of this, but I do desire, as Catherine mentioned, a change life. <clears throat> Dad, she gives his name, is not saved. Sorry this was so long, brother, but I would appreciate any prayers you would be willing to lift up for me as my experience is much like Catherine's. Praying for all of you. Blessings in the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah, well, let's pray for her real quick here. Just take a minute. Dear Heavenly Father, I do pray for this sister. You know her name, you know her situation, Lord. And I just pray that you would please strengthen her and, and lead her and guide her and direct her into what she should be doing. And um, I just really do pray that you would uh, just send your Holy Spirit of comfort and uh, give her joy in knowing that uh, she'll spend eternity with you. And the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall, shall be revealed in us, as your word says. And I just pray, Lord, for all the brethren out there that are suffering in, in similar situations where there just seems to be no way out except for heaven. And I just pray, Lord, that you would help us to get through it. 
And uh, remember that in due season we shall reap if we faint not. I ask it all in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Um, try to pray for people like this. And, and um, there's a lot. There's a lot of suffering. And uh, I'll be talking about the suffering Christian thing here in just a little bit. Don't want to get ahead of myself. Um, here's a letter. Not going to go through the whole thing, but it does bring up a question, which I will answer. He says, I have a question for you. The initials here are uh, J-H, J-D-H, say it that way. Um, I have a question for you. I would like if you answer this question, if not publicly, at least privately to me. The question is this. Where in the King James Version does God tell us in no other words God wants or wants us wants to have a personal relationship with us? Um, I don't know of anywhere where the, the Bible, the King James Bible says that he wants to have a personal relationship with us. Okay. Well, then it means we don't have to have personal. No. Hang on. <laughs> okay. I, I, I need to do a, a specific study because I put this in one of my sermons. I don't even remember what sermon it was. The thing of um, basing your language on the King James Bible. Okay. And there are times when you can say something that is not explicitly spelled out in the King James Bible, but there are so many scriptures that point to that thing there that what you're saying, you're not adding to scripture. You're, you're, you're using a statement that's not included in the Bible, but it's not bad. Okay. Um, I need to do that and, you know, um, be more specific with this whole thing. Uh, the personal relationship thing. Um, let me get my Bible here. Um, where does the Bible actually talk about you having a personal relationship with Jesus Christ? Um, I'll give you the best verse on that that I can think of right now. Um, I have to look it up. Let me just look it up real quickly here. Okay. Philippians 3.10. I was thinking chapter 4, but no. It's actually right there where I turned to. Um, Philippians chapter 3, verse 10, to me, uh, really shows um, the thing of why you need to have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. It says that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death. Um, what is that? It's a personal relationship. Um, if I say, you know, uh, I know Donald Trump, you say, what would you say? You say, uh, do you know him personally? Yeah, I know him. He talks to me about his struggles that he has. Um, he tells me all about the problems that he has going on and, and whatever else. See, you say, wow, he tells you all that personal stuff. Yeah, sure. Well, you say, then you really do know him. And you say, you know, I have fellowship with him and things. I talk to him, you know, whenever I need to. See, that's a personal relationship. Well, that's what we're supposed to have with Jesus Christ. We're not supposed to have some kind of a corporate relationship that you go and you're just a, a number in some big church somewhere. And the guy stands up and gives his pretty little sermon on Sunday and you do your 10% tithe and there you go. There's your, that's Christianity. That's not Bible believing Christianity. Bible believing Christianity is you get truly born again where the Lord saves you and the Holy Spirit moves in to your body. All of a sudden things will start to make sense to you and you'll start to say, oh, that makes I, I get it now. I understand this. And, I, and you know, and you'll, the, the scriptures will will come along, come, come alive to you. <laughs> the scriptures will just come alive and you'll and all of a sudden you'll be saying, wow, 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 you know. And you'll see the thing of, especially when you get into ministry, you'll see this thing of like the disciples and you get friends in the ministry and you'll see the same thing. You'll have your John that's just is a beloved disciple, friend in the ministry. You'll have Peter who's who you love him, but they just, you know, they, they um, 
misrepresent you. <laughs> just got a big mouth and whatever else. And they, they say things and you think and you got it. That's not what I meant, you know, Peter. And then you'll have your Judas Iscariots. I've had a few over the years, you know, people that have backstabbed me after being, you know, quote unquote, friends of the ministry. So, you know, when you get to know the Lord on a personal level, when he saves you, um, he'll start to show you things and you'll see the sufferings that he went through and you'll see the frustration that he went through. Um, you'll understand what it was like for Jesus Christ to walk through crowds of people and just feel vexed and just feel how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? You know, you'll see that you'll feel that. Um, that's what having a personal relationship with is, you know, personal relationship with Jesus Christ is all about. Okay. It's not corporate. Okay. Yes. You are a part of the body of Christ. Yes. You have fellowship and you can talk to other Christians and things like that. Absolutely. Um, I love fellowshipping with Christians and if people say that I'm this isolated hermit that doesn't want to talk to people. I love talking to people. I really do. Uh, everybody that's ever said that about me has never met me personally. Just kind of interesting. They're qualified to tell me about, you know, how I feel personally and things and my personality. And they've never met me. Never sat down and talked to me. But anyhow. Um, uh, this one here we just got today, too. Um, I'm not going to read the whole thing because it, it just gets into some of the, you know, just personal stuff um, as far as what he's going through and whatever else here. Um, Dear Brother Brian, greetings, my friend. I hope all is well with you and your family. I wanted to wish you a happy 4th of July and a happy birthday. For those of you who don't know, my birthday is on the 7th, so two days ago. I turned 44 years old. Um, I also want to write to you about a few things. And he goes into a bunch of um, uh, he sent a shirt, um, Guaya Barra, and uh, it's a traditional Cuban men's shirt. It's white. I have it hanging up downstairs and uh, really comfortable, actually. I'm looking forward to wearing that. It'll be just for really hot days, I guess I could wear that. If I'm not doing work or whatever, I don't want to mess up a white shirt like that. It's really nice. Fits perfectly. So thank you very much for that shirt. Really, really neat. Um, and uh, the, the name there is starts with a D. So um, like I said, I'm not going to go over a lot of things. And by the way, you did say something I have to make a comment about here. The thing about eating better. And um, uh, where does he say it here? Um, second, you mentioned that Christians should stop eating junk food in order to deal with depression. That one might be easier said than done, but after watching your video, I've decided to make an effort to cut back on certain junk foods. I'm going to be honest. I might not be able, I might not be yet yeah, be able to stop eating ice cream altogether. Um, please remember brother Brian, that it does get really hot down here. <laughs> uh, well, uh, you can get healthy types of ice cream. Okay. I'm not against ice cream. Right. Um, I know Friendly's makes a natural type of ice cream. Um, you want to watch out for high fructose corn syrup. Unfortunately, most have that, um, but you can get some that have um, uh, oh, cane sugar, natural sugars, things like that. Um, just plain old cream, you know, milk cream and things, heavy cream. If you make your own ice cream, homemade ice cream is amazing. Um, I used to make it when I was little. I mean, it's a, it's an old thing. You know, you make ice cream, you put in your heavy cream. Um, can't think of what it's called right now, but just heavy cream and, uh, you know, your sugar and it's a little bit of salt and things like that. There are recipes for it and you put it in this little canister and, uh, then you put that into a little thing that you can either do by hand or they have powered ones. And then you put ice and like lane salt, heavy salt, and then more ice, and then heavy salt and more ice on top. And basically turning it, it churns the ice cream all together. And, um, you know, you can put different flavorings in it, whatever else. And, uh, you know, it comes out really good. And you can use, you know, pretty much healthy ingredients. And, uh, but, you know, I see 
um, Omar Gonzalez there. Vitamix, yeah, Vitamix blenders are good. Freeze, you know, get some good fruit, freeze it, and then uh, you can put in some like plain yogurt and uh, frozen fruit. Put in some raw honey and things like that, and uh, just as good as as uh, any ice cream you're ever going to eat and healthy. You can put superfood powders into it as well. So you don't have to give up ice cream. Okay. That would be terrible. Uh, so. Uh, I got another one here. Another one that came in here recently. Um, this, the initials are JZ. And um, Mr. Denlinger, hello first. Thank you for all the time you put into your videos. Second, I want I watched and downloaded PDF about words and have a Thomas Nelson Dictionary Concordance Bible 1970 and a KJV, the Schofield Study Bible, copyright 2002. My question is, the local church Bible publishers' Bibles, are they good? I mean, without mistakes that you point out in your PDF, or do I need to buy first, then check if they have any errors? Thank you for your time and the name. Um, the truth of the matter is that PDF that I have on my website actually came from local church Bible publishers. So um, their their Bibles are um, very good, definitely, um, and uh, I will recommend those. And again, it's not it's not going to affect doctrine. The Lord's you know you're not going to get less of a blessing if your Bible says uh, you know spells one word slightly different than a, you know Cambridge spelling versus Oxford spelling or whatever else. It's more about just imploring. Um, I shouldn't say uh, requesting uh, publishers that just let's just make a standard King James text the way it should be spell these things a standard way that's most mostly what it's about so if you have a, a King James Bible that has spellings a little bit differently well you know it's not the end of the world or anything I wasn't trying to imply that by putting that article up there so but I'll end on this note here um, this isn't a letter, but we got this, uh, you know, thing in the mail is church source, Bible studies, church, um, campaigns, um, bulk Bibles, preaching tools, reading it backwards in my other screen over here. So, um, but just, yeah, it, it amazes me. Going through this thing and and looking at it and just thinking, what in the world? I mean, it, you know, this this all these specialized Bibles, you know, special Bibles. Is it, this is marketing. They don't care. This is called demographics. I mean, I literally had a video, an older video up, um, where they were, uh, oh, what? See something over here. What is the address to send letters to, please? Um, King James Radio Ministries, P.O. Box 335, Bridgewater, Maine, 04735. I'll put that up on screen. There it is. Hopefully that's coming out good. Ah, come on. My camera doesn't want to show too too well. But um, anyhow, you know, I, I did this video years ago where they were talking about um, – you know, uh, what was the thing? Different demographics. Zondervan was talking about. We haven't, you know, published a Bible for college students yet, or we haven't done one for whatever. Uh, there, it's all about money. It's all it's about. You know, they get these, you know, children's Bibles, adventure Bible, children's outreach Bibles. Man, this this stuff, you know, it it just. Uh, looking through this, I literally start to feel sick in my stomach at just the this. It's all about the money, you know. Um, you know, the only pew Bibles you'll ever need. It's NIV. You know, you just kind of yeah, okay, sure. Um, the years and years ago, one of my uncles died, and they had the funeral at this Calvary Church in uh, Pennsylvania there. We call it the skull cult because the NIV actually removes Calvary and they put in the place of a skull. So literally, that's what it says. 
And so we just, we, we laugh about it because they took out the King James Bibles and they put NIVs in the pews and yet they keep the name Calvary church, even though the NIV takes out the word Calvary. Yeah. Okay. So we, we had these little tracks, you know, that tell how crooked, crooked the NIV is. So while they were doing, you know, talking to whatever, some of the stuff there in the funeral, um, just I guess before the service or whatever else, we went into the main sanctuary and we're going around putting these gospel tracks in the NIVs. <laughs> so great fun. Um, but you, just the, the, the new age terminology and, and the wording of this stuff. I, I read this to my wife earlier. It cracks me up. They, they have this read the Bible in community books of the Bible. It's a, you can shorten your time reading the Bible because that's what you want to do. You know, you, why bother reading the book? You know, you just, Let's get through this thing quickly. Let's, I don't want to take much time reading the Bible. You know, but this guy here, Jeff Mannion, senior pastor at Ada Bible Church. The community Bible experience was a rich and rewarding experience for the family of Ada Bible Church. Reading through the entire New Testament over eight weeks united our church community around a common goal. <laughs> Terminology. It provided a great structure for dialoguing over scripture as we reflected from week to week. I highly recommend it for any pastor looking for a Bible reading program for their whole church. <laughs> Isn't that nice? You know, well, we can dialogue. <laughs> oh man. Community Bible experience, unshakable hope. You know, it's, it's all this, you know, all these, these video tools, you know, for your, giant cult building to, to teach your little communitarians how to be better communitarians. You know, it just, uh, word, holy roar. What does it mean to praise God? Seven, wor seven words that will change the way you worship. You know, it's, you know, it's, it's just, you, you understand why the Lord says, you know, I will spew thee out of my mouth. You know, you know, we went, went to this uh, town in the area here last, this, I think it was this past Christmas, might have been two Christmases ago, and there's this, this town park or whatever, they were having this sleigh rides, free sleigh rides or something, and I said, yeah, let's, you know, go this, I've never been on a, a sleigh, horse-drawn sleigh, you know, and whatever else, I thought this would be kind of neat. You know, I'm not going to do the Santa Claus thing or whatever for Oliver, but I thought, hey, we'll do this horse-drawn sleigh ride thing. That'd be kind of neat. And I uh, get there, and it's, it's loud, obnoxious music playing. I mean, just you can hear it blocks away, and it's it just terrible. And I thought, I said to my wife, we're walking towards this park, and I said, I can bet you that that whoever's playing that music at this town park, I bet you it's a modern church. Sure enough. Modern church, they were there with their little stand and their little booth and this smiling people. We have literature. We're going to give literature out, you know. So disgusting. And I mean, I've literally heard of lost people that were invited to these big mega churches like that. And they go and they come home with headaches because the rock music is so loud. And, they, and they've said, you know, I remember one guy told me the story of a, of a literally he went to some big sports stadium where Joel Osteen was having one of his, you know, big programs. And he literally said, one of the workers there said, we've had rock concerts in here and heavy metal concerts and whatever else, big concerts, big name bands, you know, and none of them have been as loud as the music played here with this church. Good testimony. You know, that's, this is Christian save people. Now it's the antichrist system. Um, I mean, it's, it's, it's just socialism. It's all it is, just, just social reform. You know, what's next? The journey to know God, find freedom, discover purpose, and make a difference. <laughs> you know? I mean, yeah. The Nehemiah Code, it's never too late for a new beginning. Family values, nice little things here, you know. Um, Charles Stanley, David Jeremiah, these guys are all just new version, little pawns of Rome. 
And then you got this guy here, NT Wright. I, I don't I don't even know who these guys are, honestly. But you know, check out the old Roman collar there on him. You know, nice, nice. Yeah. Yeah. Don't even know who all this stuff is, but just some of the stuff in here is just insane. And yeah, you know, here you go. You got the uh, um, women of the Bible for women's Bible studies and whatnot. And you got this picture down at the bottom. Look at that, look at the one woman there. You know, big tattoo there on her arm. You know, I I mean I get it. If you if you're saved and you had a tattoo from your lost life, I'm not gonna you know give you a real rough time about that. But uh, you don't put that in as a model type of a thing. And a lot of these people are getting you know Christian Christian tattoos now. You know there's no such thing. Okay, tattoos are sin. It's not good. If you had one in your past, well, it's a mark of sin that you can't get rid of. But they're wrong. <laughs> you are the girl for the job. You know, another video thing for your femin feminars. You know, no more holding back. Empowering women to move past barriers, see their worth, and serve God everywhere. <laughs> It's just my word, you know, or you can get born again and just serve the Lord, you know, in your life and, and, you know, be a strong, you know, guiding the home, you know, things like that. Um, see, see this, this whole thing, this whole thing is all because the church buildings are run by lost people. That's what the whole thing is. So they have to continually make ways for you know uh worldly things to be you know um appealing or whatever else to these church people they can't just give them scripture they can't just give them hard king james preaching and say this is what the bible says here it is like it or lump it no no you can't do that you know and they get into all this just you know i don't even know what to call it psychological babble you know it, it just Boggles my mind, you know, but see this is Antichrist Church right here. That's the whole thing. The whole world is going to worship the beast So Anyhow, that's about it for answering the letters um, If you're out there and I haven't answered your letter, I apologize for that uh, There's a lot that comes into the ministry here and um, we're up here right now at our office. Let me just stick this in this over here quick. And um, I guess I'll probably just throw that out. So, but uh, had an interesting thing happen the other day. To tell this story real quickly. Um, driving along and. Uh, and we have our, our old fire rescue truck that we use for work, and then we used it to pull a trailer all over the country, 4,000-mile trip last year. And, um, and so we're driving back home from here, and uh, all of a sudden it just boom, and I bop, 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 you know, in the back. It's got dual rear tires. It's a super-duty truck. And um, it comes in really handy for hauling a lot of, you know, construction material, which we are building in things a lot. But uh, anyways, the, the inside rear right tire, the inside tire blue, the tread separated, you know, like the tractor trailers, the, it's like a retread and the thing blew off. And, and so it's, you know, flopping around there, wham, 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 this rubber. And so we're about eight miles, seven to eight miles away from our, our property. and I said, I don't know what we're going to do because I can't just, you know, what are we going to do here? So I said, well, let's just make it back. So we, we drove 15 miles an hour just driving and boom, 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 the whole way home. Didn't do any damage to anything but just that one tire. So 
not a big deal, but uh, it was it was uh, kind of funny. Oliver was saying it sounded like a train goes going boom, 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 boom the whole way home, like a steam engine. <laughs> Vehicle issues are always fun. Um, and we have other issues right now too that are, you know, our transmission is basically about ready to go out in our little Chevy tracker and the truck. I think I, I bent the frame or something on that this past winter because the the bed's no longer lining up with the cab and, and it's having some really weird issues now. So, oh, the joys of, of vehicles and things. Um, okay. I'll answer some people here. Um, Absolute Truth Ministry, brother, could I ask for prayers? I'm trying to quit the death smokes today and I'm struggling, brother, so could you pray for me? Thanks. Yeah, absolutely. We'll pray for you on that. Um, we'll just do that real quick. Dear Heavenly Father, I do pray for the brother that's trying to quit cigarettes. Lord, I, I just pray that you would please get him through this. Give him the strength um, that he needs to overcome that temptation. I ask it in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Um, replace it with something good, you know, is, is what I would say. I don't mean vaping or something like that. I mean, you know, um, get some kind of natural thing, uh, you know, to replace it with. I'm, I, I, I'm going to have to do some research on that because I know that there's some good stuff. There's a cacao nibs, I think, are one that I've heard that can be used because it gives you really strong magnesium. Um, it's what chocolate's made out of. It doesn't taste quite like chocolate because they put a lot of sugar in the chocolate to make it nice. But um, cacao nibs, I'm pretty sure I've heard that's a good way to get rid of, you know, something to be putting in your mouth and chewing on it that'll help with that nicotine addiction thing. Um, YouTube videos, Brian, will you sell your property in Bridgewater and try to get one closer to your new property for ministry because of distance? That's what we're trying to, to do. Um, we're not going to be selling this property because we wouldn't get anything for it. Um, we'd be, I think if we got $10,000 for it, we'd be doing really good. I mean, it's, it's in bad shape. It's pretty much we're going to be tearing it down because we can use the lumber in this place. It's got some really good lumber in it. A lot of wooden floors, wooden, you know, sheathing on the outside walls. So there's a lot of wood in this place. Um, and we added it up. If we were to buy the amount of wood that's in this place, it would be somewhere probably, or I should say if we were going to build this place, it would be right around forty to $50,000 uh, material cost to build a place like this. So if we can get, you know, good lumber out of this thing and the roof metal and whatever else we can get off of it, windows and doors and whatever, it's actually going to be worth more than if we would sell it. And houses up here usually take about 10 years to sell. So, uh, we don't need anything really expensive or exciting or whatever else for the ministry office down near our property. There's a few places that are available. We just, the money is just not there right now. So we're praying about it. See what the Lord does. Um, um, Uh, Jay Romero, I have a lot of Jehovah's Witness family members. I want to know how to approach them. I've tried to show them scriptures, but they always try to debunk it or rebuke it. Um, I would start off with just a simple thing of saying, do you know for sure that you're going to go to heaven when you die? Do you know that? Because they don't. They can't know that. They That's why they have to do the door-to-door -door thing and whatever else. They do not teach that you can know that you're going to go to heaven when you die. And then show them the scriptures and just say, 1 John 5, 13 says, These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God that ye may know that you have eternal life. Um, and just say, do you know? The Bible says you can know. Does your system, Jehovah's Witness system, does that say you can know? You know, you keep it simple. You can get into all the things of Charles T. Russell's false prophecies and uh, Judge Rutherford buying a mansion called Beth Serene and, and all this other stuff. You can get into all that. 
And what they, they teach Jesus was killed on a torture stake, not on a cross. Uh, you can't have blood transfusions. You can't celebrate any holidays or you can get into all those little debates, but just bring it right back to the thing of salvation. Because if they're not saved, they're not going to understand the other things, the spiritual things. Okay. Um, so, yeah, that's that's how I, uh, what I would say about that. Um, what about Mark Hunter? Uh, I don't even follow the guy anymore. Um, he went off the deep end about things and, and whatever else and whatever. Um, not going to comment on that. Uh, um, Bado, what do I, th uh, what do you think about replacing the term eternal security with eternal life and everlasting life? Good suggestion. Yeah. Um, a lot of questions or a lot of things that have been come up with that people have come up with over the years, um, eternal security, the preacher of rapture, whatever else uh, you can understand when you read it and or excuse me, when you study those issues that it's, that it's right. But, it, you know, this, those, those sayings are not in scripture. And so, uh, you know, I believe that there's more power when you actually use the scriptures. And I think that that's important. Um, so, you know, everlasting life, if you have everlasting life, well, then do you lose that life? You know, uh, so then salvation is up to you. You know, so, yeah. Um, Brian, I recently made a video about the gospel versus the plan of salvation. You might find it interesting. Yeah, I haven't had a chance to watch that. It's, um, um, Brian, are you aware that Google Hangouts will be no more starting August the 1st? No, I did not know that. Um, I know that they have some kind of a thing that you can download some kind of deal or whatever else, but I don't know. <laughs> so if I can't figure that out, then I'm not going to be doing live streams anymore. Um, not really sure what to do about that, but I'll, I'll try to check out your video, you know, Brother Brian. Uh, I'm Blake Moore. I've been so upset. Need prayer for a job, a car, a way out of this place. Uh, me being here causes me to sin more. Seems never get out, so I need help. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll pray for you. Um, pray here quick. Um, dear Heavenly Father, I do pray for uh, Blake here. I pray that you would please lead and direct there. If there's sin in his life, I pray that you would please help him to understand what he needs to do to get out of that. Help him with the process of sanctification and um, get him out of the bad situation that he's in. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, you know, I've been in some real bad situations myself with living and and, and whatever else, um, you know, and it takes time. You know, the process of sanctification, let me just say that. You see some Christian that's got years and years and years of sanctification, you know, the sanctifying work of the Holy Spirit behind them. And they say, boy, I got my health right, living in a great place. I got this, I got that assurance of salvation i'm just doing great i've memorized all these hymns and, and you, you know you're just newly saved and you're thinking oh, i don't know if i'm saved because i'm not like them well understand that sanctification takes a long time and you know the lord will be very gentle and he'll get you through things and he'll give you time and, and he'll show you things and, and whatever else um please understand that you know, don't don't get frustrated when you see people that are have really gone, you know, far. The Lord will take you through, you know, that process of cleaning your life up. Uh, what do I think about Chris Pinto's um, documentaries on the King James Bible? Pretty good for the most part. I don't, I've heard pros and cons on the thing of Chris Pinto. Um, he, I think he came out with something years ago about 
somewhat pro-Catholic or some statement that he made or whatever else. Uh, you know, I, I don't know. <laughs> I just, I, 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 I'm not going to recommend it. His videos, Chris Pinto's videos, but I'm not going to call him a heretic either. So, uh, Spanish fly. I have a question in the New Testament. The Greek word one is Mia, a irregular feminine word. Does it strictly mean one and one only? Well, the the thing that you need to understand about the the Greek um, is there are over 40 Greek texts out there. Okay, many of them with multiple editions. Like the Nestle's text is now into its 28th edition. Um, so when you say the Greek in the New Testament, the Greek word, and then you also have the problem of definitions of Greek words where you have like Unitarian, uh, there's a, um, what's his name? Um, not strong. Uh, Thayer. Thayer was a Unitarian. He wasn't even a saved man, in other words. And he came out with Thayer's lexicon, explaining Greek words. So, you know, defining Greek words, I'll say it that way. And um, and so, you know, you read that and you say, well, the Greek word here says this. And it kind of you know doesn't look like it matches the King James. Well, what's the source? You know, it, I mean, there's so many different things. And then you have the issue of uniform translation where you have uh, Aeon, we'll say, is translated sometimes as age, sometimes as world. And then you have that it kind of, uh, you know, you can debate it and whatever else. Uniform translation to say one word should be translated the same way every single time. That's very problematic because uh, like the word post in English, well, post always means a wooden thing sticking up out of the ground, right? Or it can mean you post something on a bulletin board or it can mean, you know, a soldier standing at his at guard duty or it's his post. I mean, there's so many different, you know, words. Well, how do you know which way to translate it? by the context in which it appears? So you know, watch out for the Greek thing. Uh, you know, God gave us a King James Bible that was translated by some of the greatest, most intelligent men that have ever lived. Uh, there's no question about that. The credentials of some of these scholars that worked on the King James Bible, they sent, they spent seven years, you know, getting it just right. And the Lord has blessed it since then. So <clears throat> stick with that. Um, <clears throat> uh. <clears throat> well, okay, you know, getting it from the Texas Receptor receptus definition from strong's concordance strong um he was not a i think i have my strong concordance here um I'd, I'd watch out for the greek in the back because it's not pure textus receptus it's it's actually called the majority text um i think hodges and farstad or something you know and and a lot of the strong's greek meanings will not actually match the king james meanings it, the whole Greek thing is just so convoluted. It's it's quite confusing. <clears throat> um, it's not a, in other words, it's not just as simple as saying this word in Greek means this word in English translated every time that way. Um, no, there's a lot of issues there. There's variations within the manuscripts. There's there's different ways to define Greek words. You know, the, uh, there's different Greek texts, and th there's a lot there. Um, yeah, you did miss, miss the answer to my question or to your question there, <laughs> Brother Otto. So, yeah. Um, I think the thing about the eternal security being it should actually be just everlasting life. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, can I do a video on the history of the church? Oh, brother. <laughs> that is a very big subject. Um, hmm. um, <clears throat> Brother Brian, did you know that Andrew Snake is fellowshipping with not King James Version only Calvinists to do a new movie about the Greek New Testament? No, I did not. I didn't hear about that. Um, oh, about Chris Pinto. Yeah, Chris Pinto 
there, Votto. Um, yeah, I, I'm iffy on that whole thing. Uh, but yeah, the uh, the thing about Anderson Ake doing a new movie. No, I didn't. I didn't know about that. I'll have to look into that. Yep. What's the best way to lead a Pentecostal to salvation? Um, show them what the scriptures teach. Um, and show them that it's, it's these things have I written unto you. First John five thirteen. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Salvation is about what this book says, not about your experiences. That's what I would say to a Pentecostal. So. Yeah, the see the thing about the whatever festival stuff there. Um, you know, I'll, I'll say this in terms of street preaching at a lot of these um, big rallies and whatever else. Um, you know, you know, I, I'd be careful about some of that street preaching stuff. I mean, you know, you'd say, well, that we need to have a voice out there. If God calls you into that, then yeah, okay. Um, I, I don't know because you know it, it, the Bible plainly says things are going to get worse, and we're heading into that time of you know uh, you know the Antichrist system rising and whatever else. So to say that we can somehow undo the, what the scriptures say, you know, let's we're going to bring revival to America when the scripture says no such thing. Uh, you're kind of fighting against what God says in His Word, so. Um, you know, and and you get the thing of group think as well when you go to some place like that. They're out there expecting to be confronted. They're out there expecting to, you know, any attack is them being persecuted, and therefore they join together and they get firmer in their beliefs. It's, it, you know, you're just wasting your time at a lot of those big rallies, honestly. And I think going and you know, putting tracks on their cars and whatever else, yeah. Do that. Um, <clears throat> um, Blake Moore, brother, one question. Why do evil spirits roam the earth like so-called haunted homes, places I've seen on YouTube of activity and poltergeist, etc.? Why does God allow that other to prove his existence? Um, well, I would uh, I would say, you know, this, this thing of haunted houses and, and whatever else and ghosts and apparitions and poltergeists and whatever else, uh, I'll, I'll give you an experience, personal experience, okay, on that issue. Um, I knew a guy uh, growing up, and he had this house, this old Victorian house in Pennsylvania, and everybody would say about the thing was haunted. Uh, my older sister stayed there, and she heard footsteps coming up the steps plainly in the middle of the night, and she said something to this guy's daughter. They were good friends, and she said, oh, yeah, she said, that's the ghost. That's we just hear that all the time, you know. You'll hear him coming up the steps, and you go out, you turn on the light, and there's nothing there. Um, you know, weird things. My mother was there helping him clean the one time uh, they were getting ready to move, and she said she felt something like a string going over her face like that. And she turned around, she thought somebody was fooling around, put the string down on her face, and there wasn't anything there, and you know, all that type of stuff. And uh, you say, well, what do you think of that? Well, it turns out that this guy was a, a Freemason, former Freemason. Now, um, were there some things he didn't take care of spiritually? You know, he's a professing Christian, but I don't know. But um, you, you start messing around with the occult, you're opening pathways to devil spirits and you know things that you can be deceived by. And uh, <clears throat> so that's what my belief is on that. I don't think that they're you know, spirits are waiting in transition to go to the next life or whatever. No, no they, they didn't have, they didn't get everything done in this life. So then they come back and haunt until they can go and find their rest or whatever. No support for that in scripture.
at all. Um, so, uh, you know, I would say, you know, um, you know, when you deal with any kind of thing like that, like there's a haunted house and, and whatever weird spiritual stuff going on in there, um, just go on in and, and just say, okay, Lord, uh, I mean, there was a the, the one house my wife and I stayed in the first place we actually had after we got married that we stayed in. Um, there was actually a pentagram carved into one of the walls, you know, the the like the door frame, and it just you know just kind of I didn't say, oh, you know, and get out oil and put oil on the thing and you know go out and plead the blood seven times around the house or something. No, it was just you know okay, we'll fill this house with with hymns. Uh, no television. We'll, we'll read the Bible out loud and whatever, and, and there was no problem. So, you know, um, that's how I would answer that. Um, Aaron Springborn, hey Brian, how are you and your family? Doing good? Just busy. <laughs> Any updates regarding a new idea for income to replace PayPal? What about a general GoFundMe account separate? from your ministry office one um the as far as the whole paypal thing is concerned i didn't really clarify that and i need to say it you know because a lot of people are saying oh, it sounds like a scam you know that they're they're going to scam you it's they're faking paypal because they're getting your information no it was actually from paypal and that's why our account is now definitely from paypal i'm very careful about that we did get to replace paypal with so Uh, Andy W. X. Catholics have a video called Jesus Christ is not God the Father. Any comments regarding this? Uh, I don't know if that's a new video. Um, I, I tried watching some of James on the whole thing, and um, unfortunately, is, it, is the thing lagging here, I guess. It stopped working. I don't know. I'm getting this little circle thing. Can it, can people still see me here, or is the computer just frozen up here, or whatever? Huh. Okay. I guess my stream is weird or whatever. I don't know. Um, <clears throat> James Battelle, you know, I heard him actually uh, remove, you know, when it, when it says in John chapter eight, he says, um, if you believe not that I am he, he shall die in your sins. And James was kept removing he from that. And so, you know, taken away from scripture. So, um, you know, I recommended James for a while and I don't anymore. It's just as simple as that. So. <clears throat> All right. Well, I'm probably going to call it quits here for now. Um, so. All right. Uh, so hopefully, if you were one of the ones that wrote in, hopefully I answered your questions. Thank you to everybody that that uh, you know sends me letters. Okay. All right. Yeah, I'll I'll check into some of the stuff there. Some of you know, what you're saying there. Um, yeah, I get so sick and tired of people infiltrating this channel and and whatever else. You know, it just. Uh, just irritating. Um, yeah, we're, we still have PayPal. 
you know, we can we can still get donations through PayPal. Um, I haven't given up on it yet, uh, but so. Um, Armine Irving, I'll be in Maine in August. Is it possible to meet you in person? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we'd have to set up something, I guess, but um, it, it depends on what part of Maine you're in. I mean, you know, we're, we're the northernmost part of Maine. It's, you know, you're going to be driving many, many hours to get here from the southern part of Maine. Um, uh, yeah, I did. There, uh, Holly Hilton. I actually did. Uh, I went through the uh, letter and everything else earlier. So just watch the early part of it. You can see what I had to say about that. Um, okay. Okay. <laughs> People are just starting to come in, kind of, you know, hey, how's it going? And I'm just about ready to end it. So uh, we'll do it again sometime. Maybe not for much longer because um, I'm, I'm learning now that uh, August 1st, they're doing away with this Google Hangout thing. So, um, but okay, uh, I guess that's going to be it. So we will definitely keep everybody in, in our prayers. And uh, please pray for us as we continue to um you know continue to build at our property and whatever else and, um so a lot of big idea or a lot of a lot of uh, sermon ideas and things coming up and uh some good stuff so okay that's gonna be it thank you to everybody for watching and we will see you in future videos